niyo po ba ang problema ng asawa niyo sa kung kanino man, lalo't higit kay former Davao City Mayor Rodrigo Duterte? Okay, so anong nangyari? There are many, if not countless, articles about your husband stating na tama naman na pinagtanggol mo siya at nanindigan ka. Siyempre, bilang asawa, pinaglaban mo yung pinaglaban mo yung spouse mo. Anong nangyari nun? Hindi oh. mo ba siya inilapit kahit kanino? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Can I make a statement, Mr. Chair? Can you just answer our question, please? Nick, okay. hindi mo ba siya... It's understandable that we stand by our spouses. Ay, wala pong mali doon na na yun po ang, kung ang sagot niyo po ay, oo, wala naman pong mali doon. Naiintindihan ko po yun completely. Asawa niyo po yun. So, nilapit niyo po ba ang problema ng asawa niyo sa kung kanino man, lalo't higit kay former Davao City Mayor Rodrigo Duterte? No, Your Honor. All right So, hindi mo siya nilapit kahit kanino? No, Your Honor. Ah, okay. Thank you. Ngayon, it would say here sa iba namang news article na the final straw that broke your marriage was another incident which I will not mention. And sinasabi dito, kaya ka map mapupunta din sa Manila. Kasi, uh, kumbaga, na iskandulo na ang pamilya nyo. Tama po ba yon? In 2004, Oo. Mr. Chair, um, hindi pa po nag-start yung skandal doon. It's more of, um, what do you call this? <coughs> I have to have a space, Mr. Chair. Oo, oo, oo. space. Naintindihan natin yan. Okay, go on. And then, nung nasa Manila na po ako na I have to bring my special child, uh -oh. my only daughter. And uh, since uh, I am alone, I have to leave my daughter sa Cagayan with my mother who was, during that time, na stroke, and my father, who is an, uh, nag-aalaga po ng special child na bunso namin kapatid. So I have to travel from Manila to Cagayan every two weeks just to check my daughter. So nakita ko po na mahirap po ang maging single mother. You have to commute every day from Bikutan to... Na-hold up pa nga ako eh. Dahil dyan sa pag-commute ko araw-araw, my service firearm was nakuha pa ng hold upper. And it was really very, very difficult for me. So sabi ko, I've decided na yung anak ko nahihirapan din and my parents, I decided to go back sa Davao and face yung marital problem ko and that since nandun po yung yung conjugal house namin mm -mm. i have to go back all right so that's the very reason na kailangan ko bumalik if i am alone during that time i can make it in manila but since i have a daughter because of your daughter na may special need po at mas mababa po ang cost of living sa davao nandun po yung mga therapies and I think, sabi ko, it would be best for my daughter if I will go back. Anyway, I can handle pa naman yung situation ng marriage ko. Yun po yung naging reason kung bakit bumalik po ako ng Davao. Wala na pong ibang rason, Mr. Chair. All right. Um, patungkol sa, I'm sorry to bring this up, ma'am. Uh, there's an article and, it's and, the, and the title is very noteworthy. The title says, a second, sec, second chance Villela, overcoming a colorful past, starting out with a clean slate. Napakaraming kinukwento dito sa mga pinagdaanan ng iyong dating asawa, ma'am. Uh, ang tanong ko, sino ang mga tumulong sa asawa mo na kahit sa dinami-dami niyang pinagdaanan, napakaraming kontrobersiya, ay na-appoint pa rin po siya sa Iloilo na maging chief ng Iloilo Police Provincial Office. Mr. Chair, I think he earned that. 
Mr. Chair, kung makikita niyo yung kanyang service record, matalino po siya, marami pong training, very competent, nagtatrabaho po siya na maayos. So I think he earned that position, Mr. Chair. All right. So you completely deny? Are you telling me you're completely denying that you went to and you sought the help of former Mayor Rodrigo Duterte to somehow help your husband? Hindi po totoo yan, Mr. Ch Your Honor. So anong totoo? Wala kang ginawa para sa uh, para matulungan yung asawa mo? Wala po, Your Honor. Ah. He earned it, Your Honor. He earned what? Whatever po yung positions na nakuha niya, he earned it. Despite having very scandalous cases? I don't... Mm, kaya nga he earned it. <laughs> he knows his way up, <laughs> Mr. Chair. He surely would know his way out. So hindi mo siya, ma'am, talaga tinulungan. Because In countless... Articles, merong Rappler, iba't iba pa, nagsasabi dito na naging hingahan yon ng sama ng loob nung panahon na yon si Mayor Duterte. And mm. thus earning his trust. No, Your Honor. All right. Ngayon, ma'am, mabalik po tayo. Nung first assignment niyo po, Nabanggit niyo po ang first assignment niyo ay bilang... Ano nga po ba ang first assignment niyo, ma'am, sa Davao? I was the team leader of the anti-vice uh, unit. No, my first assignment was I was the chief of the HRDD, All uh, right. Human Resource uh, Doctrine Development under admin uh, branch of Davao City Police Office. That was my first assignment po sa Davao City. So all your stints in Davao are within the city? The city of Davao? No, Your Honor. Okay. Saan-saan sa Davao ito? When I was with uh, CIDG 11, I was assigned at uh, Davao del Sur at the, as the provincial officer team leader of CIDG, and then Davao Norte as a as, uh, team leader of the provincial office of CIDG 11, Your Honor. All right. All right. So, nung naging CIDG po kayo, sino po ang naging appointing officer nyo? I cannot recall anymore, Your Honor, who issued the order. The order came from Camp Krame, Your Honor. I was relieved from Region 11, reassigned to CIDG, Your Honor. Nung iba niyo pa pong appointments, sabi niyo Davao del Norte, ano pa po? Davao del... Davao del Sur, Your Davao Honor. Davao del Sur. Sino naman ho yung mga appointing officers niyo doon? Um... When I was assigned as team leader of CIDG Davao del Sur, it was signed by Colonel uh, Mungao. And uh, when I was assigned as team leader of CIDG Davao Norte, it was signed by our regional chief during that time was uh, General Corpus, Your Honor. All right, I'd like to move forward a little. And then there will be a time that in 2017 you will be assigned as the district, as the director ng CIDG ng Region 7. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And later on, you'd become the director ng Cebu City Police Office. Yes, Your Honor. And kanina nabanggit ni Congresswoman Luistro that somehow... Hindi naman natutuwa sa inyo si Mayor Tommy Osmeña and he was very very vocal with his how do I say it dislike sa presensya niyo doon. Tama ba? Yes, Your Honor. So, if you were not Mayor Osmeña's choice, you're even quoted as saying na umabot kayo sa punto na nung unang buwan niyo sa posisyon Gusto niya na po mag-resign. Ang tanong ko, what made you stay as the chief of Cebu City Police? 
I, I, Mr. Chair, I don't quit when a position is, was given to me, even in my most difficult time. I'm so, sorry, ma'am. Sorry, pakiulit. Yeah. Uh, Your Honor, hindi po ako nagkikwit kung binigyan pa ako ng task na medyo cha na-challenge na po ako. The position was offered to me by General uh, De Bold Sinas. Um, uh -oh. I have high regards and respect to him. Yes. So when the position was offered, sabi ko, Okay, sir. OIC lang po ako. Never po ako tinanggap as uh, director. So, until I retired, officer in charge lang po ako, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Alam mo, ma'am, saludo ko sa inyo kasi kahit hindi maganda yung relasyon nyo kay Mayor Osmeña, nagstay kayo. Kasi napakahirap yon para sa ating mga kapulisan na hindi sila gusto nung kanilang local chief executive. Napakahirap po makipag-coordinate, magtrabaho, nang hinding-hindi ka talaga gusto. At nagpapa-interview pa yung mayor ng kanyang dislike sa inyo. Kaya napakahusay niyo po. Ang tanong ko, ma'am, nung panahon na po yun, na nasa Cebu ka, sino-sino po ang mga sumusuporta sa mga programa niyo noon sa Cebu? Total, was, the mayor wasn't cooperative with you. Yeah. Our regional director who was uh, General uh, De Bold Sinas. Si De Bold Sinas? Si De Bold Sinas yung naging uh, SPD nung una, naging NCRPO? Yes, and there was... Uh, yes, Your Honor. Oo, tama. Yes, Your Honor. Naging PNP chief ba? Naging chief PNP rin, tama? Yes, Your Honor. And then, ma'am, ang tanong ko... There is a rap, another Rappler article about you. And the title, let's just base it on the title. The title says, Cebu City Police Chief Royina Garma, Mayors Hated, Duterte's Trusted. May I ask you, why would the article give such a bold title? Bakit po kaya kayo ang pinapangalan ng trusted ng ating Pangulong Duterte? I do not know, Your Honor. It's impossible that you don't know the answer to that question. Uh, bihira po mabanggit na ang isang tao ay ganun-ganun na lang ang pagtitiwala at ganun na lang ang sinasabi sa mga news articles about you. Na the news articles specifically say na kung ano man ang galit sa inyo ng mayor ng Cebu City nung time na yon, eh gano'n na lang talaga ang tiwala sa inyo ng Pangulo. Kaya ka nag-stay doon. Bakit po kaya, ma'am? Mr. Chair, I do not know why that writer wrote those articles, Mr. Chair. Ang dami palang mali na na-google ko. Ano? All right. But my question would be, Cebu City is a very important place in the country. Um, it's like, napakahalagang lugar, napakalaking lugar. Bakit po kaya kayo ang nilagay doon? Sa dinami-dami po ng kakilala ng Pangulo, sa kakilala ng lahat, bakit po kayo ang nilagay doon? Mr. Chair, Hindi niyo pa rin po ba alam, ma'am? Mr. Chair, the position was offered to me by General Sinas, Mr. Chair. Bakit po kaya? That I do not know, Mr. Chair. Mm. Malabang ibang choice, ma'am? Di ba, usually, ang pagkakaalam ko, binibigyan ng choice ang mayor. Siguro tatlo, listahan ng tatlo, listahan ng lima para nakakapili ang mayor. That I do not know the wisdom of General Sinas during that time, Mr. Chair. Siguro based sa performance nyo, Colonel Goyina, napakagaling nyo para kayo ang ilagay na uh, director ng Cebu City. Oo, kahit na ayaw sa inyo ng mayor, kayo pa rin at nagstay po kayo. Ngayon, mag-fast forward po tayo nung napunta po kayo sa PCSO. Sinasabi niyo po na nag-apply po kayo sa PCSO. Tama po ba? Yes, Your Honor. Bakit po kayo nag-apply sa PCSO? Mr. Mr. Chair, um, during that time, way back 2017 uh, po, prior to that, 
my daughter was diagnosed with dyslexia bipolar po siya. Okay. And um, nagkaroon po na problema sa school. I was the regional chief of CIDG 2017, that was August. Nakaproblema po siya, I have to pull her out from school. All right. Na home school po siya, dinala ko po siya sa CIDG para, nag, para maalagaan ko po siya. Kasi hindi ko siya pwedeng iwan sa father ko, he's old already. And my brother is a special child. It is too much for my father, who is 75 years old. So I have to bring my daughter with me sa CIDG. And we have to, we need, dun po kami natutulog and everything na po sa dilapidated building po ng CIDG. Yes, uh -oh. So I realized that which is better, my career or my daughter. So sabi ko, option ko yung daughter ko, sabi ko. So... During that time, I nag-iisip na po ako to leave the service and maybe find, for, find a, a less demanding job. Kasi very demanding po ang police work. Alright, ma'am. Naiintindihan po kita. I mean, everyone has, you know, naiintindihan natin yan na, you know, you had to take care of your family. But of all agencies, bakit yeah. po PCSO yung napili okay. niyong applyan? Yeah. Uh, napakarami naman pong ibang pwede niyong applyan na trabaho. Bakit po PCSO? And hindi po ba kayo tulad ng sinabi ng iba na nang hinayang dun sa tenure nyo? Actually, Mr. Chair, during that time, there are already um, news about the allegation of corruption sa PCSO. So, so nung babasa po ako ng article, sabi ko, tignan ko nga ang charter. Inaral ko po ang charter ng PCSO. So nakita ko, dalawa lang primary work ng PCSO. That is lottery and charity. Sabi ko, kaya ko gawin ito. Second, the only law that I should master is anti-illegal gambling law. So sabi ko, kaya ko gawin ito. So naisip ko, kaysa papasok po ako sa ibang work that is law enforcement related, hindi ko naman maalagaan ng anak ko, it will... Kailangan na naman po niya ng aking panahon. Wala po kaming Pasko, wala kaming New Year and everything. So All sabi right. ko, so, I think I can do this. So kanino Paano po kayo nag-apply sa PCSO? I submitted my letter. Uh, paano po ba yun? Kasi uh, I'm very curious. I'm sincerely curious how one applies. Do, do yeah. you give a letter? Do you yeah. give your, um, ano ba tawag doon? Personal data sheet? And where do you go? I submitted my application. Where? Uh, kay, to whom? Um, to, to, to now Senator Bongo. To Senator Bongo. Yes, Mr. Chair. Your Honor. I wrote a letter addressed to the President applying for the position. So, so personal niyo pong kakilala si Senator Bongo or lumapit lang po ba kayo? Lahat po ng pulis sa Davao, kilala po si Senator Bongo. So, kilala niyo po si Sen... Ako din naman po, kakilala yes. ko si Senator yes, Bongo. Yes, Mr. Chair. Wala pong pulis hindi nakakakilala sa kanya, lalo na po officers, Mr. All Chair. All right. So, lumapit po kayo kay Senator Bongo at sinabi niyo, was he Senator this time or he was still SAP? I think he's staff. He's still the staff of uh, uh -oh. the President. Nung special assistant pa siya. Um, all right. So, anong sabi sa iyo ni Senator Bongo? Babasahin daw ni President. Babasahin ni President and obviously nabasa niya kasi ikaw ang napiling general manager. Tama po ba? Yeah, yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Your Honor. And were there any specific orders nung naging general manager na po kayo ng PCSO? Yes. Were you on your own? How, how did that go? The instruction is tulungan ko lahat na mahihirap despite ko anong political color kailangan pantay ang trato and those instructions came from who the president mr chair so you did you have a meeting with the president yes mr chair kami kami sa PCSO with the board we have a meeting you have a mr. meeting chair. with the president because the PCSO is under direct supervision ba ng anong ahensya We are under the office of the president. You are uh, under the office of the president. All right, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. I believe I've established a lot of, um, from the various positions held by Colonel Garma, and I look forward to learning more.
during this hearing about the actual depth and intricacies of her relationship to the numerous resource persons who have mentioned her in the countless hearings. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I yield to the next Mr. interpolator. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you uh, Congresswoman uh, Pami. Uh, Mr. Chair. Congressman uh, Akop, Chair. Akop. Two points regarding the uh, questions raised uh, by the Honorable Zamora. Number one, uh, Madam Garma, nagkaroon ba ng kaso yung iyong asawa? Yes, Mr. Chair. Ano po yung kaso niya? Mr. Chair? Please reply. Uh, uh, I, it's not my case, Mr. Chair. It's his case. Asawa mo siya eh. Di alam mo dapat. Ano yung naging kaso niya? Rape, Mr. Chair. Ano po? It's, I think it's rape, rape, Mr. Chair. And because of that, dapat ma-dismiss siya sa servisyo? If found guilty, Mr. Chair? Was he dismissed from the service because of that case? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Hindi ka humingi ng tulong kasi ang tanong ni uh, Honorable Luis Tro at kasi Honorable Zomora kung humingi ka ng tulong eh. Sa ang sagot mo hindi. So you never asked help. No, Mr. Chair. C okay. Um, can I explain further, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chairman. M Mr. Chair. Uh, li please limit your answer on the question yes. and the query of the uh, yes. interpolator. Yes. Since the question is uh, on that uh, issue, yes, so uh, you are yeah. not allowed to, uh, to explore it anymore because that was already satisfied. Okay, you you answered already satisfied yes, the question Mr. of uh, Congressman uh, Akop. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So you never asked help from anybody no, regarding Mr. the case of your husband? No, Mr. Chair. And that was the reason why your marriage was annulled. According mm, to reports na annulled no, your marriage nyo. Mm, that's, that's not the main reason why that's I filed for annulment, okay. Mr. Chair. But it is anymore. one of the reasons, Mr. Chair. Now, uh, when did you retire, optionally retire from the service? June of 2019, Your Honor. And when did you get appointed to the PCSO? July, July 15, I think. July 15, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Of 2019 also. Yes, Your Honor. So, ako, bilang kwan, napakabilis. Kari-retire mo lang ng June. Anong date ba sa June nung nag-retire ka? Hindi ko na maalala. I cannot recall. I think it's 15, Your Honor, of June. I'm not sure, Mr. Chair, but it's the same year, Mr. Chair. It's Kasi, June of 2019. Kung titignan po natin, Madam Garma, napaka iksi yung kwan eh. Yung uh, period when you optionally retired and when you got appointed to the PCSO. Para bang, para bang sinadya. Nag-retire ka optionally to get the post of uh, general manager of PCSO. Yun lang po yung tinutumbok ng mga katanungan. And uh, this representation, I think, would also believe that na ikaw ay nag-optional retirement because you knew for a fact that you can get the position of the PCSO. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Congressman Akop. The next to interpolate is uh, Congressman Johnny Pimentel. You are recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I would like to direct my question to Colonel uh, Rui Nagarma. Magandang umamba po, uh, Colonel. Uh, originally, you are for Cagayan, hindi po ba? Yes, Your Honor. Saan po kayo nakatira ngayon? Davao City, Your Honor. So, kailan po kayo nag-settle doon sa Davao City? When I got married in 1998, Your Honor. So, in 1998, that, was, that would be right after your graduation sa PNPA. Uh, ano ang nickname ninyo? Anong tawag ko sa inyo? Yin po, Your Honor. Uh, yin. yin. Okay, Yin. 
it was already asked earlier that you went to school at PNPA and then you graduate you graduated 1997 in Dipuba. Yes, your honor. At dito mo nakilala uh, yung PDL na si Jimmy Fortaleza. Yes, your honor. Dito rin din po nakilala si yung husband mo si Chief Inspector Roland Bilela, hindi po ba? Yes, your honor. Dito rin Dito rin, nakilala niyo po si Colonel Hector Grijaldo. Yes, Your Honor. In short, ito po ang naging close mo na friends, including uh, Jimmy Fortaleza, hindi po ba? Doon sa PNPA. Your Kasi Honor. binanggit po niyo kanina, mm -hmm. bumisita kayo, kayong limas, dapat bibisita kayo ng July 2, 2016 kay Jimmy Fortaleza, eventually tatlo na lang po kayo. So in short, doon sa PNPA, nagkakaibigan talaga kayo. The fact na binisita po ninyo si Jimmy Fortaleza. Hindi po ba? Magkakakilala, magkakai but not close. The term is okay. Mr. Chair. Now, when you graduated in 1997, you were made to choose on what regions or what region you'd like to be assigned. And pinili po ninyo Davao. Hindi po ba? Region 11 region was 11. my first option, Mr. Chair. Yeah, first option. Uh, region 11, the headquarters of Region 11 is uh, Police Regional Office is in Davao City. And I've seen that you have been in PNP service for the past, or for 24 years, hindi po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Now, out of 24 years, would you say mga 70 to 80 percent na assigned po kayo sa Davao? Yes. Karamihan po, tinignan ko yung uh, uh, record ninyo, karamihan po ng assignment nyo sa Davao eh. Yes, you were uh, uh, briefly assigned in 2004 to 2007 as CIDG officer. Then in 2019, napunta ho kayo ng uh, Cebu City, hindi po ba? Yes, Mr. Anong year po yun nung napunta po kayo sa Cebu City? Anong year? 2019 um, nung na-assign po kayo? 2018 to 2019, Mr. Okay. Chair. Now, under the local government code, it is very clear that the local chief executive, in this case, whether the mayor or the governor, will have to choose from the PNP, uh, dun sa listahan nila, three names na gagawin nilang chief of police or provincial director. But in this case, I understand that that was not followed because even at the objection of Mayor Tommy Osmeña, nilagay ka pa rin ni Devold Sinas o Sinas ba yun uh, as a chief of police. In short, hindi pinalo yung protocol, hindi po ba? I, I, I do not know, Your Honor. I just received the orders, so... I just assumed the post city uh, director. In, according to Mr. Chair, according to newspaper reports, uh, you were not in good terms with Mayor Tommy Osmeña. Um, kaya nag-object siya doon sa pagkalagay uh, mo doon. Pero it doesn't matter whether it was devolved sin us or whether uh, it was approved. But the fact remains that when, when you were assigned in Cebu City, you had a relationship that is not really, in short, very cooperative with uh, Mayor Tomis Menya. Dahil maraming mga pinalabas na mga uh, newspaper uh, reports regarding your relationship. In fact, ito po, ano? Uh, this was uh, taken from one of the newspapers. Cebu City Police Chief, Ruini Garma. Mayor Tommy Osmeña hated, but Duterte trusted. So, alam po yun, Doon talaga sa buong Cebu City that uh, Tommy Smenya did not really like you as the chief of police. Bakit po hindi maganda ang relasyon ninyo ni Tommy Smenya po? Mr. Chair, nung first one week ko pa lang na-assign as city director, I was OIC, marami na po ako nakitang hindi tamang nangyayari sa Cebu City Police Office. One example is yung pag-dispatch po ng SWAT team, ginagawang patrol 
pinapapatrol sa gabi, and I have no control over SWAT team of Cebu City Police Office because it is the, the command center of the LGU that dispatches them anytime at their, kung gusto lang po nila. So dun po, nakita ko na there's something wrong. This is not correct. So I made a memo or instruction from now on, this is special uh, weapons uh, uh, unit, kasi highly specialized po ito eh. Hindi dapat dinidispatch as patrollers Mr. or Chair, napapatrol. Mr. is that the only reason I, yung pag-dispatch ng SWAT, yung pinag-aawayan ninyo ni uh, Mayor Tomes Menya? Isa po yan sa pinakamalaki po. Sa tingin ko lang po, Mr. Chair. Hindi kasi, kaya Yin or Colonel Garma ang pinakangkalaking issue ninyo is because of the extrajudicial killings that happened when you were the chief of police of Cebu City? I don't Could that be the reason why Mayor Tomas Menya uh, does not like you? Because when you were assigned in Cebu City, there were many extrajudicial killings that happened. Babasahin ko po, Mr. Chair. Ayon din po kay dating Cebu City Mayor Menya, this is according to newspaper reports, na naging out of control daw po ang extrajudicial killings noong si Maya Colonel Regina Garba na po ang umupo bilang director ng Cebu City Police Office. In fact, Mayor Thomas Menya condemned the extrajudicial killings at saka he is adamant that nangyari po itong mga extrajudicial killings nung kayo na po ang naging Chief of Police. Hindi po ba? No, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, Colonel Garma, kilala niyo ho ba itong si Yong Hu Lee? No, Your Honor. To refresh your memory, Colonel Garma, itong si Yong Hu Lee was a suspected drug lord in Cebu City. Siya po ay pinatay ng four identified gunmen sa loob ng isang motel nung kayo po ay city director. Habang kayo po ay city director. Wala akong maalala. Wala akong maalala. Uh, Colonel Garma, kilala niyo po ba itong si Junko Humada? Naalala niyo po ba ito? Dunko. Junko Humahamada. No, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, to refresh the memory of Colonel Garma, since he was the chief of police of uh, Cebu City at that time, si Junko Hamada ay isang foreign national na napatay po ng mga PT, PNP operations under your words against illegal drugs nung kayo po ay director ng Cebu City. Hindi niyo po ba natatandaan itong mga insidente na ito? No, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, kanina po tinanong ni Congresswoman Pami Samora, why of all the policemen na karami-rami sa buong Pilipinas, bakit po pinili ni Devold Sinas si Colonel Garma? Meron po akong sagot dyan, Mr. Chair. And this is only my opinion, but based on the newspaper reports, based on the statements of uh, Mayor Tommy Osmeña, lumalabas po, dumami ang extrajudicial killings nung si Colonel Ruina Garma ay nandoon sa Cebu City. In short, kaya po pinili si Ruye Nagarma ni General De Volcinas para gamitin po si Colonel Garma ni De Volcinas para sa extrajudicial killings against illegal drugs. In short, ginamit po si Colonel Garma ni De Volcinas para sa war against drugs. Ngayon, dito po tayo sa nangyari sa Dapikol. Kilala niyo po ba si SPO for uh, Art Narsolis, Arthur Narsolis? Yes, Your Honor. Paano niyo nakilala si SPO for na Art Narsolis? Nakilala ko po sa IDG when I was assigned uh, way back 2005. Hanggang Your Honor. kailan po? Until 2000, 2008, Your Honor. 
After 2008, wala na ho kayong contact ni SPO4 Arnold Solis? Meron, Your Honor. So, kailan yung nag-contact ulit kayo? Kasi sinasabi ho lang niya, 2005 to 2008. Or talagang kaibigan niyo si Arnold Solis and from time to time, nagkikita kayo, nag-uusap kayo, nagtatawagan po kayo. So, in short, since the time that uh, you met Arnold Solis, He has become your close friend, hindi po ba? No, Your Honor. Saan po naka-assign si SPO for Arthur Solis? CIDG 11, Your Honor. CIDG 11. Under the command of uh, then Colonel Eldelberto Leonardo, hindi po ba? Yes, Your Honor. At that time, kayo po ay chief of police ng Santa Ana or uh, sa sa police station? You were assigned in Davao City between 2011 to 2016 in different capacities. Yes, Hindi Your Honor. Ba? Yes, oh. Your Honor. So, si Arthur Solis was assigned in CIDG po during that time also. Hindi po ba? Yes, Your Honor. Kayo po ba, uh, Colonel Garma, eh, na-assigned po kayo sa CIDG sa Davao City? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, you were assigned in uh, Davao City. Kasi yes. kanina, hindi ho klaro yun eh. Uh, anong year po nang assign po kayo sa CIDG ng Davao City? I think that was, Your Honor, that was um, 2005, uh, maybe July or, or July or of 2005 until 2008, Your Honor. So in the year 2016, you were never assigned sa CIDG? Colonel Garma? 2016? No, Your 2016. Honor. 2016? No, Your Honor. Were you never assigned never, Your Honor. CIDG? Never, Your Honor. Of Davao City? Never, Your Honor. Never, okay. Colonel Leonardo, kilala ho ba si Colonel Garma? Yes, Mr. Chair. Madalas ho kayo magkita? Uh, nung, nung araw po, Mr. Chair, madalas ka. Bumibisita din po siya sa CIDG station, sa opisina nyo, hindi po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair, mayroon po mga panahon. So you really know Colonel Garma? Yes, sir. Is she Mr. involved Chair. in the operations of the CIDG? CIDG when uh, I cannot recall of any uh, instance that... Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, uh, may Mr. I remind Chairman? the, the uh, legal counsel not to coach kasi very important ito, very crucial to eh. Uh, uh, there are corroborative statements of the uh, different resource persons and we want to establish the link of these personalities. Uh, Colonel Leonardo, sabi niyo noon, kilala ho niyo si Colonel Garma. Tapos madalas ho si Colonel Garma sa CIDJ station, hindi po ba? Uh, nagpupunta po siya, Mr. Chair. Bakit? Ano ho ang pakay niya, uh, Colonel Garma? Uh, Colonel uh, uh, Leonardo, uh, Commissioner rather, Leonardo. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, magkakakilala po kami, Mr. Chair. So, so from time to time, bumibisita po siya sa CIDG uh, station? May mga instances na natatanda. Was this a personal, uh, was this a personal uh, visit or more an official visit? There were uh, concerns regarding operations of the CID, DG, or there were orders from uh, higher-ups? O ano hong pinag-uusapan nyo pag bumibisita po si... Colonel Garma. Um, meet and greet lang po, Mr. Chair. Uh, kasi po, nasa isang uh, compound po kami before sa Davao City Police Office. Isang compound lang po yun, nandun sa so Lubang George, City. So, George, dahil ano, pero kayo po ay mga police, kayo po ay mga cooperatives, hindi po may iwasan natin na nag-uusap-usap din po kayo ng mga operations, hindi po ba? Ano yun? That is Possibly, peer, Mr. Chair. That is peer group, hindi po ba? Kung yeah. mga kapulis, anong pinag-uusapan ng operation? Mga congressman, pinag-uusapan anong batas ang gagawin? O kung uh, ano, usually ganun niyan po nangyayari. So may pagkakataon na pinag-uusapan nun ninyong operations, hindi po ba? Uh, wala po kasi ako matandaan, Mr. Chair, na nakapag-uusap ako tungkol okay. sa anyway, operation. Okay, anyway, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Inamin na ako kanina ni Colonel Garma that there was a time in July of 2016 na pumunta siya doon sa opisina mo, nandun po kayo, nandun 
po din bumisita si Colonel Padilla. Hindi po ba? Uh, pasensya na po, Mr. Chair. Hindi ko po matandaan yung uh, instance na kami nagkita ni... Ano, ni uh, Commissioner Leonardo, Colonel remember Padilla. that you are under oath. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, hindi ko po matandaan There are po. two persons here testifying that you had a meeting in CIDG against only you. And yung isa, sinumpaang sa laysay pa, and kanina si Colonel Garma sinabi, indeed, you had, he, she was there, you, kayong tatlo, ito, na lang ang pag-usapan natin. The fact remains na doon sa CIDG, Davao Station, nagkasama-sama kayong tatlo. Yung pong sinabi ni Colonel Padilla, yun din pong sinabi ni Colonel Garma, Colonel Leonardo, o Commissioner Leonardo Rader. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, ang totoo po, wala po talaga akong matandaan na instance that we, uh, together with uh, two of them, Totoo we... po ba yun, Colonel Garma? Sabi yun nyo kanina, it's on record, Mr. Chair, that Colonel Garma stated that she went to the office of Colonel, uh, Commissioner Leonardo in the presence of Colonel Padilla. And it is on record. Colonel Garma, sino po talaga nagsasabi ng totoo nito? Mr. Chairman, can I interject? Uh, with the indulgence of Congressman yes, yes. Uh, Pimentel, uh, of SDS uh, Gonzalez, you are recognized. Uh, Mr. Chairman, based on the affidavit of second supplemental affidavit of Superintendent Gerardo Padilla, pwede niyo bang basahin itong number five na salay sa inyo? Komsek, pakibigay lang po para yung tanong ni Congressman Pimentel malinawan. Thank you po. Um, excuse me, may I know who that gentleman is behind the uh, Colonel Leonardo? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for the information of this uh, honorable committee, Mr. Chair, we have sent uh, an email uh, stating that uh, I'll be attending uh, with my counsel, Mr. Chair. Uh, so he is your counsel? Yes, Mr. Chair. Can you please uh, enter your appearance before this committee and please be advised that you're, you're only limited to advising your client his rights? Uh, not to coach uh, your client. Uh, please uh, enter your appearance, Attorney. Yes. Uh, good morning, Your Honors. Uh, respectfully entering my appearance as counsel for Commissioner Leonardo. I'm Attorney Aguinaldo Sepp, Your Honor, from Scott Law Firm and Associates. Okay. Thank you. Uh, please proceed, uh, uh, Congressman Gonzalez. Yes. Uh, binigay ko po yung uh, salaysay kay Comsec para basahin po ni Chief Superintendent Padilla, yung number five. In number, in number five, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, bago mangyari ang pagpatay... Pwede pakilakas lang po, uh, Colonel Padilla. Bago mangyari ang pagpatay sa tatlong Chinese drug personalities, nakadetained sa nasabing piitan ay tinawagan ako ni Colonel Edilberto Leonardo at sinabi na pumunta ako sa Dabao si IDG Station. Pagdating ko sa station, ay nandoon na si Colonel Garma. Uh, 